it's the multiverse. And one version of this universe. James has hair. I have hair and you don't. That's true. So how about that? There you go. Touche. That's the universe I'd like to see. Very easy to probably make happen too. I'm gonna start the video. <laughs> let's get into it. Get out of here. Okay, well first and foremost, let's talk about what multiverse theory is. Well, as of right now, it is a theory created by Hugh Everett III that follows the idea that instead of one single reality where everything exists in just one of many possible states, there are endless realities in which all of the possibilities dictated by quantum mechanics or the laws of nature exist at once. It's a pretty interesting thought. In even simpler terms, it's like there's a reality for every possible scenario. If your friend asked you to go out last weekend and you said no, in another reality you said yes. And if you don't have friends in another reality, you do. What's interesting about this theory, other than the fact that it illustrates the idea of infinite existence, is that it actually lines up pretty well with man's pattern of knowledge in regards to the universe. I mean, at one point we thought that the universe revolved around the Earth. We now know that's not true. Not only that, but the universe doesn't even revolve around our solar system. Multiverse theory is really just the logical next step in our understanding of the vastness of overall existence and the insignificance significance of the individual experience. In 2011, Columbia University physicist Brian Greene made an interesting point about the possibility of the existence of multiverses, comparing the universe to a deck of cards. Now, this goes off the assumption that space just stretches on and on forever. We can't say for certain if that's the case, but it's a very real possibility. Now, if space does go on forever though, let's think of the universe as a deck of cards. In a deck, there are 52 cards, in our universe anyway, and if you shuffle them, you'll get different orders of those cards. But if you keep shuffling forever, you'll eventually repeat the same order. There are only so many ways to arrange the 52 cards. If we apply this idea to the universe, Imagine that all the matter in the universe, stars, planets, everything else, can only be arranged in so many ways. If space is infinite and goes on forever, then eventually the arrangement of matter will also repeat. There would be regions of space that are exactly or nearly exactly like our own universe, with similar planets, people, and events. And this leads to the idea of the multiverse, an infinite number of parallel universes. Each of these universes range from vastly different to everything almost being exactly like our own or even identical. In some of these universes, maybe the only difference is that you wore a different shirt today than you have on now, while in others, the differences could be vast. Okay, so this next one's a bit philosophical, but bear with me because as Picasso once said, if you can imagine something, it must exist. And people have been imagining the multiverse long before the theory was solidified by Everett. Many ancient texts are filled with various descriptions that direct align with multiverse theory. In fact, multiverse theory was actually a common teaching in ancient Greek schools of philosophy where students learned about the reality of an infinite number of worlds existing scattered throughout an infinite void. The Bishop of Paris was also documented in 1277 arguing with Aristotle, claiming that there was no way that there was only one possible world, and to think that there was would be an insult to God's ability to create parallel ones. And and in the 1600s, one of the leaders of the scientific revolution, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, argued the existence of the multiverse, claiming that there were many possible worlds, each adhering to their own distinct laws of physics. Basically, no matter what you believe in, science, religion, or both, you can always find something that supports the theory, and I think that says something. What are the chances that we're living in a universe where life can flourish? Well, very low, actually. It's pretty amazing that things are the way they are. The fine-tuning problem is a fascinating puzzle about why the universe seems perfectly set up for life. If we were to tweak a few of the universe's basic settings, we wouldn't be here. If protons were just a bit heavier, they'd break apart into simpler particles, making atoms and matter as we know it impossible. If gravity were slightly stronger, stars like our sun would burn through their fuel too quickly for life to have the time to evolve. So, you know, the question is, why is everything so perfectly tuned for life? Some point to a creator having set up the universe just right, but there's also the multiverse theory that maybe our universe is just one of countless others, and in most of these universes, the conditions aren't right for life. But in a few, like ours, everything happens to be just right. We 
won the lottery. So either the universe was designed with life in mind, or we just happen to live in one of the few universes where the conditions are perfect. Okay, by now you should have a pretty good grasp on what multiverse theory is. If you don't, you might want to start the video over and listen carefully this time, because this next point is about to get as convoluted as a Rick and Morty subplot. Because multiverse theory could actually support simulation theory, and vice versa. If you don't know what simulation theory is, it's a theoretical hypothesis that states that what we perceive as reality is actually some kind of advanced, hyper-realistic computer simulation. In in simple terms, you know how we're kind of afraid of robots becoming sentient and gaining free will? Well, what if we were just computer programs that became sentient and now have what we perceive as free will, but we're really just code running around inside some alien's laptop? If you're feeling a bit of existentialism right now, don't worry, because you're not alone. I'm right there with you. But if simulation theory does exist and our existence really is just one big computer program, that program could be run and rerun and in infinite amount of times to simulate infinite versions of our universe, or somehow it's running all at once. On the flip side, if multiverse theory is real, doesn't that mean that in at least one parallel universe, simulation theory is correct? Don't think about it too hard because you might break your brain but like, think about it. The concept of bubble universes is also a pretty fascinating one, but all has to do with the theory of cosmic inflation, that our universe is just one of many bubbles in a vast, multi-dimensional space, each with its own unique properties and physical laws, almost like a giant cosmic foam, where each bubble represents a separate universe. Now, just as bubbles in a foam can have different sizes and shapes and properties, each bubble universe can have its own distinct characteristics, like different types of matter and energy, different gravitational forces, even alternate versions of the physical laws that dictate how everything works. The idea is that during the rapid expansion of the universe, in the early stages of the Big Bang, different regions of space-time became isolated from each other, creating these bubble universes. Each bubble universe then evolved independently. But is there any potential proof of this theory, well, that's what Hannah's getting into next. Next up, the multiverse theory is correct because we have observational evidence. Well, yeah, kind of. You see, scientists at the European Space Agency's Planck Orbital Observatory have been, and are, currently gathering data on something called CMB cosmic background radiation, which is radiation that still lingers from, as James mentioned, the early, extremely hot stages of our universe's existence. Here's the thing. In 2010, a team of scientists from Great Britain, Canada, and the United States discovered four strange circular patterns in the CMB, which they believed were caused by our universe bumping into another universe. And in 2015, another researcher at the European Space Agency made a similar discovery. Randy Ramcherry took a model of the CMB out of the observatory's picture of the sky. He then went on to remove everything else that we are already aware of from the image. He took out the stars, the gas, interstellar dust, etc. Now, while doing all of this should have left the image pretty much blank except for some background noise, it didn't. In fact, Cherry was able to detect areas in the night sky that were 4,500 times brighter than they should be. His scientific conclusion that the light particles were actually imprints from a collision between our universe and another. Science, baby. Next, we gotta talk about the sheer size of the universe. It makes the possibility of parallel ones even more plausible. Our universe is incredibly vast, and it might even be infinite in size. So the scale means there's a lot we can't see or detect. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old, so we can only observe light that has traveled to us within that time frame. Anything beyond 13.8 billion light years away is just too far for us to detect, no matter how powerful our telescopes are. Now, think about the possibility that there are regions of space far beyond what we can see. These regions could be part of a larger multiverse containing parallel realities that are completely separate from our own. If the universe is infinitely large, then it's not just likely, but it's 
pretty much certain. For this next point, I thought we'd have a bit of fun and talk about how dreams could be proof of the existence of multiple parallel universes. Or at the very least, how if there are in fact multiple parallel universes, our dreams could be a glimpse into some of the others. While it used to be widely accepted that our dreams were simply a succession of ideas, emotions, and sensations involuntarily brought forward during various stages of sleep by our subconscious, it is now believed by some that dreams are actually so much more. Perhaps we are somehow connected to our parallel selves living in parallel universes, and things like dreams and deja vu are our way of communicating with one another. I know it sounds crazy, and I know it sounds a bit like I've lost my marbles, fallen off my rocker, and gone off the deep end all at once, but hey, if multiverse theory is real, in one of those universes, this theory could be too. The mathematical universe theory, also known as the mathematical multiverse or mathematical universe hypothesis. So this proposes that because the universe is made up of mathematical structures, maybe different mathematical structures represent separate universes. Mathematics is not a human invention. Mathematics was a discovery that we've used to help make sense of the universe. Our universe is like a giant cosmic equation where everything can be described and understood through mathematics. Not understood by me, but by smarter people. There are infinite numbers of mathematical possibilities, so all of these mathematical possibilities are almost like a library with an infinite number of books, each representing a different mathematical structure. Our universe might just be one of these books on the shelf with its own specific mathematical rules that govern how all the particles, the galaxies, and everything else in between behaves. There could be an infinite number of parallel universes, each with its own unique set of physical laws. In one universe, gravity might work differently, while in another, the speed of light might be different. Every possibility could exist in a separate universe, making our reality just one of many. Well, with all that said, I have been your host, James. I've been your host, Hannah. We'll catch you in the next one.